days seemed never ending. I was so sure that where we were heading was right. Life was a road so certain and straight and unending. Our little road with never a crossroad in sight. Back in the days when we spoke with civilized voices, women in white and sturdy young men at the oar. Back in the days when I let you make all my choices, we can never go back to and enchanted if I had dreams then I'd let you dream them for me back in the days when everything seemed so much clearer women in white who knew what their lives held in store where are they now those men who stared from the Let this be the year we 
Is Evelyn Nesbitt the harlot of, the, of Babylon? <laughs> Where did you hear that? Well, I read it in one of Uncle's magazines. I don't want you going in there. I'm sure Evelyn Nesbitt is a very nice person. She's just confused. <laughs> she strayed from the path. What path? The right path. The one we all want to be on if only we could, and if only it weren't so difficult. <laughs> not for women it's not. Men are tested almost every day of their Christian lives. Not everyone's Christian that. They are in New Rochelle. <laughs> Houdini! Houdini's coming. Oh, can we go? I'll do anything, please. You see. Warn the Duke. <laughs> Edgar, why did you say that? <laughs> I don't know. Well, what did you mean, warn the Duke? I don't know. The things you children say. Read Father's letter if you're not going to tell me. <sighs> Dear Mother, this letter will reach you via the supply ship Eric. Get Kathleen. Well, what's wrong? Get Kathleen, I tell you. Holy Mother. Get clean water, clean linens, call the doctor. Is it alive? Oh, please, God, let it be. It's alive. It's a Negro child. A newborn baby boy. It's like Moses in the bush. Oh, it's like nothing of the sort. What's to become of us? For the last time, Kathleen, do make yourself useful. Well, we found her in the cellar of a home on the next block. She's a washwoman there. Her name is Sarah. Are you the mother? Thank God I found him. What if I hadn't been working in the garden today? Don't waste your time, ma'am. She won't say a word to anyone. Where will you take her? To the charity ward. Eventually she will have to stand charges. What charges? Well, attempted murder, I should think. What's going to happen to the baby? They have places for unfortunates like that. I will take responsibility for mother and child. Now please, take Miss Sarah into the house. Oh, I hope it's you under all of that, or I'm going to kiss a strange man. <laughs> oh, it's him! Welcome home! We've missed you terribly! Did you get all the way to the North Pole? No, only Admiral Perry and his first officer, Mr. Hinson, did. Oh, well, they're professionals. <laughs> I got to 72 degrees, 46 minutes, a very respectable way. I should say so! My left heel kept freezing. Well, we'll get you into a nice hot tub then. Oh, I look a fright! You weren't expected! Oh, you're just in time to help with the six-month audit. Business is wonderful. I adore going down there. I think you should pay me salary. What are you holding? Oh, Sarah's child. We found it in the garden. Who's Sarah? What is that music? Cole House. He's courting Sarah. That's their baby. He comes every Sunday. Oh, he's hoping Sarah will eventually take pity on him and go down to him. How long has this been going on? I don't remember. Five months. I've been counting. Cole House is teaching me to play the piano. I think that what we are witnessing is, in fact, a courtship of the most stubborn Christian kind. Yes, if you can call a courtship what has already produced a bastard child. I find that an unkind remark. I find your welcoming of such a situation unfathomable. There was suffering, and now there is penitence. It's very grand, and I'm sorry for you that you cannot see it. I did not expect you to come home a different man. I had just hoped to find you a kinder one. I'll see about your tub. Good morning, Baron. I see our children are playing again. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Please, I need interruption. Always working, always working. It's a curse. Ah, oh, I know what this is. It's called rag. I like this music. It makes me want to turn a cartwheel, but I won't. Not today. What's wrong? I'm thinking of someone I miss very badly. No, two men. My brother and a Negro man who used to play this kind of music on our piano in New Rochelle. We never know when our feelings will creep up on us and go boo and startle us, do we? No, never. Well, <laughs> no rest for the wicked. I leave you with this question, madam. 
Would a woman leave her husband for a butcher? He were a kind butcher, a thoughtful man who wondered what she thought about. Yes, she would. Ah, that's the title I've been searching for, the thoughtful butcher. I am forever in your debt. <laughs> well. Oh, look, down on the beach, the children. Not too fast. Well, she doesn't hear me, no? She hears me, but she doesn't listen. All children are like that. What is their hurry? I'm very glad ours have become friends. Well. You say that often. Well. It's because I don't know what to say, Baron. I'm not a Baron, of course. I'm a poor immigrant, a Jew, who points a camera so that his child can dress as beautifully as a princess. I want to drive from her memory every tenement stench in filthy immigrant street. I will buy her light and sun and clean wind of the ocean for the rest of her life. Now you know me. Now you understand. I am no Baron. I am Tate. Now I even know what to say even less. Now it's my turn. Well. Thank you for your confidence. I shall keep it here. <laughs>